1870 Walter Pater, an English art historian of Dutch origin, author of the famous formula, Art for Art's Sake, after his trip to Italy a few years earlier, published an essay on a painter who had fallen into completely forgotten for centuries. His essay on Sandro Botticelli will go a long way towards bringing his painting back into the spotlight among critics, art historians, and museum visitors. Without Botticelli we would have been impoverished of his unique conception of feminine beauty which he sought and transmitted to us in his paintings and frescoes. Today it has become universal. Born in 1445 in Florence, seven years before Leonardo da Vinci, Alessandro Botticelli grew up in a modest family. He is in delicate health and has no taste for studies. After having been, fleetingly, an apprentice goldsmith in the workshop of one of his three brothers, he convinced his father that his true vocation was painting. From his apprenticeship in silversmithing, he will retain great precision in ornamentation and the tracing of contours. His father then decided to place the teenager in the studio of the great Florentine painter Fra Filippo Lippi in the service of Cosimo de' Medici with whom began the generous patronage of the Medici. Fra Filippo Lippi is known for his many representations of the Virgin who are famous for the elegance of the silhouettes and the finesse of the facial features. This will greatly influence his favorite disciple Botticelli. Alessandro will spend three years closely imitating his master. From June 18th to August 18th, 1470, he worked on his first public commission, which earned him considerable prestige and success. This is an allegory for the commercial court of Florence, representing strength. The figure of a seated woman is of great beauty. It was precisely the continuous search for absolute beauty, beyond time and space which then led Botticelli to gradually break away and develop a style that was noticeably different from that of his contemporaries. This makes him a practically unique case in the artistic panorama of the time and after. Botticelli, painted around 1470-1474, Madonna of the Eucharist which shows the development of his style resulting from the influence of Fra Filippo Lippi. The most striking development lies in the enhancement of the beauty of the characters. Their faces stand out like portraits. From the year 1472, Botticelli's reputation was established in Florence thanks to the active support of Lorenzo the Magnificent. So named because his range of talents constituted one of the finest incarnations of the ideal of the man of the Renaissance. He transferred to the most promising student of Fra Filippo Lippi, the protection of the Medici. From then on, the orders will follow one another without interruption for about twenty years. Unlike contemporary painters, Quattrocento painters almost always worked to order. They enjoyed a social status little different from that of shoemakers or gunsmiths. It was the client who indicated the subject and determined the details that the work should contain. Lorenzo the Magnificent entrusted Botticelli in 1474 with the creation of a banner to be displayed for the nightly joust organized in Piazza Santa Croce. The contenders for the contest, won by Giuliano de Medici, fought over the portrait of Simonetta Vespucci presented as palace. Considered the most beautiful woman in the world, adored by the Medici, she embodied the feminine ideal for court artists. She served as a model for several painters, including Botticelli who was her platonic lover. She died in 1476, at the age of 23. Botticelli wrote in his will that he wished to be buried at his feet. When Botticelli died, 34 years after the beautiful Simonetta Vespucci, his wish to be buried at his feet was scrupulously respected. One can still visit their tombs today in the Franciscan Church of Agnesanti, in Florence. By bringing his participation to a big ceremony, Botticelli begins to be introduced socially. On the orders of one of their supporters, around 1476 he produced the Adoration of the Magi, sometimes nicknamed the Medici Adoration. We see him posing proudly in the company of the Medici and their court. Without the orders of the Medici and without their love of letters and the arts that they transmitted through Florence. 
Botticelli would certainly not have had the opportunity to bring her conception of feminine beauty to the maximum. Thanks to their patronage, he executed works without which his place in the history of art would certainly not be the one he occupies today. And without which art would have been considerably impoverished. Botticelli's style is characterized by an original expression determined by the particular physiognomy of his characters of timeless beauty. This beauty, subtly veiled in melancholy, is often inspired by women who have really lived. Their natural elegance and finesse are integrated into the aesthetic vision of the artist. In Venus and the Three Graces offering presents to a young girl we recognize in Venus Giovanna degli Albizzi. This woman of the upper Florentine bourgeoisie of the Quattrocento, known for her beauty, is represented in numerous works by Domenico Ghirlandaio and Sandro Botticelli. Loving feelings for a woman strongly inspired Botticelli and his master Fra Filippo Lippi. Since he fell in love, in 1458, with the nun Lucrezia Buti, whom he finished kidnapping, Filippo Lippi's Madonnas and Virgins have undergone a radical transformation. For his part, his disciple Botticelli, platonically in love with Simonetta Vespucci, famous for her beauty and charm, created the birth of Venus, which has become a universal icon of beauty. Unfortunately, these faces of Botticelli, capable of evoking in a sensation specific to poetry, will one day disappear from Botticelli's paintings. The artist, of a sensitive and vulnerable nature, experienced in his forties the influence of a little man with the profile of a goat, Girolamo Savonarola. This Dominican enjoyed great popularity for the sermons in which he blamed the corruption of the Florentines, their debauchery and their love of money and luxury. The Medici, to whom his art owes so much, had been the first to be attacked by Savonarola. The painter was torn, for he approved of the attacks on the vices of his fellow citizens and their lack of faith. The ideal of beauty, reached in the Medici period, gives way to the devotion of Botticelli who returns in his work to the purity of the primitives. The hostility of Pope Alexander VI and other Italian heads of state undermined Brother Savonarola's popularity. He was excommunicated, then burned at the stake and tortured in the Piazza della Signoria on May 23, 1498. Botticelli, however, no longer returned to his earlier style of painting from the Medici era. His last years were quite dark and he had practically no followers. The artists who succeeded him went down other paths. His unique and recognizable style has had no successors. He died in 1510 without leaving any works made during the last decade of his life. His art fell into oblivion and was neglected for centuries. Along with Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa and Michelangelo's creation of Adam, Botticelli's Birth of Venus is the most reproduced image in different forms nowadays.